to the one of Yoginanda Kumara. This persistent, non sitting despite the challenges, and it is no small place. So let us offer a very grateful pranam, Viganama Lotuses. It was raining heavily when we started, so we had to rush to the abode. So we could do it relatively peacefully. But then such a small space, if there was any disturbance, we will have to ask pardon from God. We will seek His forgiveness. Now today, we shall have another glimpse from the life of somebody who came into contact with Bhagavan accident. There were many people who had come to Bhagavan just once or twice and benefited much. And that was enough to last their lifetime. Paul William Roberts Paul William Roberts was one of them, a very popular Canadian writer who wrote a book, The Empire of the Soul, way back in 92. He published it and where he had dealt with his pilgrimages to various places, to various Mahatmas in India. In 1975 and later again when he visited in 1990. Now in that book, he has also described his meeting with Yogi Ramsar Bhagavan in Tirunam. When he first came to Bhagavan, Roberts found him in one of those brass vessel shops, which was almost empty. And here there was no one except Bhagavan who was seated on a wooden bench, which was otherwise empty. As soon as Roberts walked over to Bhagavan, surprisingly Bhagavan took both his hands in his and said, Oh, you have come. As though Bhagavan knew, as though Bhagavan was familiar with him already. Of course, Bhagavan once told me, no one is a stranger to him. We were going in the car from the ashram on our way back to Sudan. A group of foreigners coming in the opposite direction looked at Bhagavan. Bhagavan gave them a very beautiful smile, the bewitching smile which he always gave. But then to those foreigners, he did not matter at all, they just turned away and walked away. I felt very offended and also was disturbed because I knew so many people devotees of Yogi Ram Bhagavan been waiting for such an opportunity, for such a beautiful smile from Bhagavan towards him. And for some of them it never happened. But that day Bhagavan 
chose to view the Buddhist chief smile to those foreigners, but they turned their face away. I felt tears pressing upon my eyes. And then I turned to Bhagavan and said, Bhagavan, just see how indifferent they are. Why would you waste such a beautiful smile on them? Had came the reply to Bhagavan. This beggar doesn't know their cave. Father wanted this beggar to smile to them. So this beggar smiled. This beggar does not know why father wanted this beggar to smile to them. What have you implied? I used to call it Brahmastra because whenever we question, whenever we put a question, genuine question, he would not answer directly. And if he did not want to reply at all, he would simply say, Oh, this beggar doesn't know. All. That is the ultimate weapon. The ultimate destructive weapon is called Brahmastra in the Hindu Puranas. So after he said that, I had to be quiet and still I was not reconciled to it. And suddenly the one turned to me and said, I was thinking, these people are total strangers. Why would Bhagavan wish to smile upon them? And Bhagavan immediately turned to me and said, Their king, no one is a stranger to the spirit. I was telling you. I did not even voice out. I was thinking that they must be very, they must be strangers to the place and they did not know Bhagavan properly. But here Bhagavan was answering, they might not know this better, but this better knows them. And this better had to smile. So, as soon as Roberts came into his presence, Bhagavan took both his hands in his and said, Oh, you have come. He must have been familiar to Bhagavan because no one was ever a stranger to him. So now, Prophet felt very comfortable with Bhagavan and he started to discuss many topics. And one of them was, what is the job of the yogis, the saints? What do they do? Then Bhagavan said, as usual, Oh, you decided to just sit here, doing nothing, and then smile. His eyes, Prophet goes on to describe that Bhagavan's face was radiant, and his eyes were even more radiant. Now, immediately the thought that came to Roberts, what is he saying that he's not doing anything? When he could be working hard and earning something, he could be doing some task. Is that not escapism from duties? Immediately, Bhagavan spoke, even without Roberts voicing out. Bhagavan said, My friend, there are many tasks to be done in this world. <coughs> Father uses this weather also to do that. And then he continued. He said, After the great master, this great master, of this beggar somehow took this beggar into his fold and gave him the chance 
to work for father, to be an instrument in the hands of father to do his work. He did not mention the name, though they say it is Papa Ramdas, but then Bhagwan had told me quite a few times that he was drawn to Sri Aurobindo's work. Sri Aurobindo would never allow people to be idle. He would also be doing work. Sri Aurobindo was bent upon uplifting the entire humanity to a higher level of consciousness. He was laboring hard for this mammoth work. Even to give transformation to one person is so difficult. Now here Sri Aurobindo was doing laboring hard for uplifting the consciousness of the entire humanity to the next higher level. But somehow Bhagavan was so impressed with this idea because of the suffering of the people of the world. So the higher we are uplifted, the lesser will be the suffering. So I think probably Bhagavan could have even remembered Sri Aurobindo. But it's true that when Bhagavan wanted to say in an Anandashram, Papa Ramdas said, you have to go out into the forest of this world. You have a mission. And that's how it started. So Bhagavan said there are many tasks to be done on the cosmic level for the sake of our father, hinting that he was engaged in that work all the time. Then the Roberts asked him, how do you people influence the events of the world? Because Bhagavan said, soon after he mentioned his father's work. He also added that his working for the humanity would bring about a change in the world events. It could shape the outcome of world affairs. Immediately, Roberts wanted to know how they could influence the world affairs and bring about a result that they want. Then Baba just looked at him penetratingly, powerfully. And just then a fly chose to come in between the two. And immediately Baba swaggered it. And the fly fell down on the wooden board dead. It was crushed. Its wing had buckled into its lower portion of the abdomen. And some liquid had come out staining the wooden board. It was dead. Bhagavan looked at him. Oh, what do you think it is? What do you think about death? Roberts knew that the reply was coming to him. He just babbled something like the end of life or something. Mawan said, you see this? Now its life force is gone. But it, it needs only a little life force to come alive. Now you watch. And then Bhagavan stood some two feet away from there. He focused. His hand raised in benediction and his breathing started to come faster and faster. It became faster and faster. And then 
he fell into an absolute stillness. There was no movement at all of any kind from Bhagavan. It was total stillness. He was still looking at the fly, the crushed fly. And suddenly, Robert saw there was a movement in the dead fly and then the wings were recovered and suddenly the fly, the fly flew away. It came alive, the crushed dead fly came alive. And then Bhagavan said by way of explanation, he would never, never explain anything to anybody. This is a, a specific grace to that person. Thanks to him that we also benefit. So Bhagavan said, you see my friend, this fly, it needed a little life force to come alive. This beggar can supply a little life force. Then again, Robert wanted to know how you can bring something from death, you can revive it, you can make a dead person alive. Then Bhagavan said, God can do anything. This was his reply. God can do anything. So he was also indirectly indicating that he had the power to revive the dead. Of course, Bhagavan had also told me that the Mahatmas would not indulge in such things unless <coughs> it is absolutely necessary <coughs> in a certain situation. And now would they bring about any sudden violent changes. Whatever changes they would want to bring upon the world, it would be gradual and stable. Now after this, of course, Roberts was very impressed by this act of Bhagavan. And then he said he was going to climb up the mountain. Bhagavan said, no, don't climb up. Instead, you go around the mountain. So he took this instruction and followed it. And when he went around, it was so, so hot. The sun was oppressively hot. He sweated so much, felt totally exhausted by the time he completed the round. And he was so thirsty that he had to drink up some 12 sodas. He used to describe it humorously. And then in the evening he came to meet Bhagavan. He wanted to take leave of him. The next day morning he was leaving Tiruvannamalai. He said, Swami, oof, I, it was so exhausting, so hot, so terrible for me. I thought I was gone. Immediately Bhagavan nodded his head in understanding. He said, yes, 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 it, it would be very, very hot there. You would have suffered. Now, Robert could not believe his ears. Swami, what are you saying? So, do you know already, you knew already that it was going to be very hot and exhausting for me? Then why did you allow me to go around? Bhagavan lowered his eyes and said, Who listens to this beggar? Now it was pregnant with meaning. Bhagavan had repeated it several times much later when he started the ashram work. Many half characters he had to come across and get work out of them. 
Now, Bhagwan, you are leaving tomorrow? All right. Do you know? Do you remember this beggar's name? And then she taught him Yogi Ram Sarat Kumar. And he made Robert repeat it nine times. And after that, he said, Now this beggar leaves you, my friend. But one thing, when you write, and you write about this weather, say only the truth. Now Robert found this a very strange, cryptic remark, because he had no idea at all to become a writer. Far less about, write about these great souls. But then, true to Bhagavan's word, quite a few years after, he did become a very popular writer. And one of his popular books is this, The Empire of the Soul, where in one of the chapters, he had described his meeting with great, great masters. He's running into Bhagwan in 1975 how Bhagwan displayed the kind of work that they were doing all the time using the life force, the prana, the pranisha. Using the pranisha because the whole cosmos is pervaded by this prana, the prana shakti, because of which there is manifestation. Now how using their prana shakti, these great masters bring upon the world the desired effect, desired outcome of a worldly event. But for Robert, we would not have known this piece of information at all. I also remember another incident which happened when I was there in Bhagwan. Now it's Dhamma. It was probably 93 or 96. Bhagavan was seated in a chair under the Amla tree, the gooseberry tree, outside the building of Sudan, within the compound. And I was seated down there on the floor, and I was chanting the name mentally and looking around. Bhagavan was completely lost in his work. And suddenly, out of nowhere, a very beautiful colorful butterfly came along and started to go round and round and round the Amla tree. Several rounds that he drew my attention and I began to admire its beauty. So colorful, so beautiful to look at and it was so active, full of vitality. Going round and round and round. As he was admiring it, Suddenly it hit against one of the branches of the Amla tree and fell down. Fell down dead. One could see that the inside of this butterfly, some of it had come out. There was some liquid also out. And there was no movement at all. It looked at very much dead. And then soon the ants began to gather around the butterfly and my thoughts were racing through my mind. My God, how beautiful, full of vitality. It was going on and on and on, moving around. And within minutes, it met with this state. So even in the presence of Bhagavan, only the fate wins. This happened to this titili, this butterfly. Even in the presence of Bhagavan. So whatever has to happen will happen, no matter what. So I was even thinking, Bhagavan, even your presence, such a mishap to play. I was just looking at Bhagwan and thinking and Bhagwan immediately turned to me and said, What is it there, Ki? I said, Look there, Bhagwan. 
this butterfly, which was full of life and activity, only minutes before, seconds before, now hit against one of the branches, now fell down dead. Dead, they keep. Yes, Baba, you see, Baba, the ants have gathered already and the liquid is out. And Baba just looked at it for a few seconds. He said, go like that, Devki. And then he looked at it for a few seconds. And then to my wonder and delight, there was some movement in the butterfly. And soon it recovered its wings and then it flew away. The life force, the prana, that, that is all pervasive. And you see this prana shakti, these great masters can bring about any effect upon any world event, be it death of a butterfly or some normalization talks between countries. I have seen the one sitting there, the veranda of Sudama, looking at papers, and if there were war clouds between two countries, and the one sensed it, he would ask me to read it again and again, and he would be smoking, and within three or four days, the war clouds would disappear and there would be peace talks. I remember the Germany, the country Germany was divided by the wall. And families were separated. Families were divided. Some relatives on this side and some relatives on this side. And it went on for years and years. And then one day, when I visited Bhagavan Sanjay State House, one of the seven Bhagavan started to talk about the dividing wall of Germany, how it separated relatives, friends. I was thinking there must be some news in the newspaper. So every day, immediately after that, I would go and look at the newspaper, but there was no mention of such a thing at all. This went on for a three or four days. On the fifth day, on the fifth day, it was flashed across the media all over the world that the dividing wall of Germany came down because of the slip of the tongue of one of the prominent politicians who never meant it but it just slipped out. And immediately the news was caught by the media and it flashed across the whole world. And finally, they had to keep up the word and that's how the wall came down. So you see, these great masters have always been doing it. That is an appeal to that generosity of these masters, our Bhagavan Yogiram Sarkana, and beg him to extricate, to free the entire humanity from the clutches of this dreadful virus and its variants and bring back normalcy in every aspect of the, in every aspect of life everywhere. Bhagavan, we beg you again and again to uproot the panic from the hearts of people, to arrest the rapid spread of the disease, to enter all those medicines so that they would kill the crowd of viruses. We beg you again to reach out to all those people who are suffering in some way or the other because of this corona, for lack of facilities, lack of rooms in the hospital, lack of oxygen cylinder, lack of the injections. We beg you to bless them so that they get what they need and become completely all right and return home safely. And again, Bhagavan, all those great, great volunteers for varied departments who labor so hard day and night for the sake of the other lives, 
just give them protection and we beg you for a lift to our economy above all we seek your blessings again and again for constant remembrance of the name and also the right attitude to life and that is being willing and efficient instruments in your hands to go about your life as an offering to you and please give us a supreme blessing so that we get completely transformed and we begin to see only your presence and your blessings in every happening of the world. Jai Dabirap Sarkar. Surat ko